Ed Good Edwina, night. I'd love to start with you mm -hmm. because everybody we have had on the programme this morning, not one could say anything in Matt Hancock's defence. Everyone says Boris Johnson should have sacked him and he should have resigned. Do you agree? Absolutely not. I mean, I'm, he, he had no choice in the end about resigning. And uh, now he's a backbencher. He's, he's toast. Uh, that's always going to be the response to ever, any criticism now. Well, he resigned. He, he actually drove to Chequers and he told the prime minister he, he was going to go. But um, my own feeling is that it's awful when ministers are hounded out of office. Uh, we should not be having government by headlines. Uh, I think the Prime Minister did the right thing by saying to him, you've apologised, uh, you know, let's move on. Although that didn't, uh, that wasn't enough in the end. And also, we've got to judge ministers, I think, not by these kind of uh, saintly standards. You know, I'm, I'm not Beaudesir, I'm not Joan of Arc. I was a minister, I was a very ordinary person. Uh, and ordinary people, human beings, have uh, failings. What we have to judge them on is results. And 84% of adults in this country have had their first jab. That in itself tells you that 84% of the people in this country actually trust the government. They trust them when they say that the jab is safe. They trust them when they say the jab is effective. And they trust them when they say the jab is necessary. To do that in the middle of a pandemic, I think, is absolutely brilliant. It makes us one of the okay. most vaccinated okay. countries Edwin, in the world. Edwin, can I just ask you, you've, you said, you know, we shouldn't hold them to saintly standards because they're human beings. But the government is asking us all to adhere to saintly standards. I mean, the government has intruded onto our private lives, private property and private relationships over the course of the pandemic and the lockdown. And the one thing we want to know from the government is that they're sticking to the same rules. So he wasn't hounded out of office. He literally broke the rules that his name is on. And Susanna, you don't have to say it so slowly. Well, for I will all ask of us the question in my own them. way, Edwina Curry, and you can answer <laughs> it in your own way. But perhaps we if do. If you want need someone to, to talk say... quickly, I'll do it for you, but perhaps... we'll get the question either way. Yeah, perhaps we need yeah, to say but... it slowly to government ministers and those who support the government. Because okay, these so... rules are for sticking to. That's what we constantly get told. Sure. All right, but that's exactly why he's gone. He was telling everybody you can't hug your granny and then he was caught uh, hugging his girlfriend and that's why, in the end, he's gone. And he didn't go just because it was one photo. He went because there was a rather lively video and then there were a whole host of other questions. And he has gone. He has resigned. You're not arguing for him to uh, to resign. Uh, but we should be aware more of what, we, what ministers are able to achieve. That's why they're in the job. We need to trust them and we need to uh, trust them to do a good job. And when they do a good job, we should say so. We should be very pleased that we actually have the best vaccination record in the world. We should be very pleased that we've had genetic sequencing and testing and the whole host of other things that are actually making this country now one of the safest places to be in the middle of this horrible pandemic. Uh, that's why I think, you know, some of the criticism is a little, how shall I put it, hypocritical. Edwina. I think we understand this isn't about the marital affair, this is about the breach of the coronavirus regulations. Now, you say we should judge on actions. Well, I'm a chair of a charity. I'm a former governor of a university. And as part of that, just as politicians are, when I do that, I am governed by the seven Nolan principles of public life, which I'm sure you're aware of. But for our viewers who may not meet, let me just tell you four of them. Selflessness integrity, objectivity and openness. Now, that's the cornerstone of public service in this country. By you saying it is only about what they achieve, you ignore those core values that says we need to be able to trust our public officials. Surely, actually, those Nolan principles are important and cannot be discounted. Oh, they're important, and I did not say only. You're the one that used the word only. But what I am saying is that in the end, if you have saints in office, uh, you're not going to get anywhere. I mean, we had a very saintly lady, bless her, in, in Theresa May as prime minister, and she achieved absolutely nothing. I'm much more interested in actually getting things done. 
and this government in and Boris... Were, so were does, does morality thought, not matter? Does ethics does not be help done. following your own rules? Does not the rule of law, which says even government ministers are subject to the rule of law and we are all individuals under that rule of your law, does none of that matter? Is it purely just about results? Can we not expect politicians who can both have integrity and deliver results? There are people out there who could do that. <laughs> Sure, of course there are. But the more that scrutiny forces people out of office, the more that scrutiny makes life extremely difficult for them and their families, then the fewer of those people are going to come forward for office. You, Martin, you would make a brilliant government minister. You have chosen not to do anything like that. You're, you're, you're a very influential personality, but you're not subject to that kind of scrutiny because you don't have that kind of responsibility. And in the end, to get good people to stand with all the social media, with all the noise, with all the criticism, not all of which is well-founded. It was well-founded in Matt Hancock's case, but an awful lot of it is not well-founded. Uh, that becomes extremely difficult. That's why it's getting much harder to get good people into politics. We've got to give them a little bit of leeway way. We've got to cut them a little bit of slack and say to them, look, you're human beings. We understand there are human beings with human failings. But in the end, if you're good at your job and you actually succeed, then we should recognise that and give you the credit. Well, I, I would never go into politics because my mental health isn't robust enough and I don't believe in an adversarial system. But I do believe in holding no. people to account on truth and integrity.